When I built this document, I included measurements for the inside and outside margins, but not the top and bottom. So that's what we're going to define next. But just a word on the inside and outside margins. You'll want to always make sure that where you've got two pages, as we're going to have here for a magazine, that you have a healthy margin size, because when the documents bound together, you're going to lose a little bit of content when it's glued together. So you don't want your important content disappearing in the fold of the page. With respect to the outside margins, well, someone's going to have to hold your magazine and they're going to get their fingers and thumbs over the edges of the document. You don't want that important information to be disappearing and someone having to move their fingers up and down the page to be able to see that. So give a good clear margin around the outside as well. And the best way to think about that potential white space around the outside of the page is to treat your page like a painting in a gallery. The margins are the thing that frame the page. Rather like framing a painting, it finishes off the page. A good healthy margin size will make your page look like it belongs. Too small and it will be uncomfortable to read and it will be very jarring. So in terms of the top margin, I want to create this document with a, a decent amount of space across the top. So I'm going to go for 34 millimeters. So to do that, I'm going to go to layout, margins and columns. Up at the top, change that to 34. If I hit the tab key on the keyboard, you'll notice that that's the kind of space I'm talking about. So nice clear room at the top because potentially I'd like to use maybe some rectangles that are going to be like little tabs across the top of the pages for sections. And I want to leave enough room for those elements. Now at this point, I'm going to click OK. A slightly more tricky aspect is the bottom margin, because you'll notice that automatically the baseline grid started where the top margin is and currently running right down to the bottom of the page in increments of 11 points. But we don't wish to run our text all the way down to the bottom of the page. We need to add a margin. I'm looking at the bottom of the page and thinking, OK, well, I potentially want to have a page number down here, maybe the name of the publication. So I'm going to want a little bit of white space away from the edge of the trimmed page and well away from any body copy that's in the publication. The simplest method that I've found over the years to gauge how much space you need to assign to the bottom margin is by using the rectangle frame tool. It contains no printable attribute, so you can actually draw a rectangular frame out from the bottom of your page and use the gray line to the baseline grid to snap to. And both in the widget next to my cursor now and in the control panel at the top of the screen, it tells me what the current height is. And from here, I can see that naturally one of these baselines would house my page number and the publication name all in one line. But then I'd probably want to have maybe a couple of baseline gaps above that before I reach the body copy and certainly at least a couple of baselines underneath well away from the edge of the trimmed document page. Once I've then discovered what that height value is by dragging out that box, I can just go up to the field at the top in the control panel and swipe across it and copy it. Or of course I could make a note of what that value is. I always will make sure that I switch the selection tool and delete that uh, rectangle frame. But if you did leave it in there by accident, as I say, it contains no attributes. So if you did leave it in your layout, you're not going to get punished for it by having some rogue element printed out that you didn't expect. I can now go back to layout and head back to margins and columns. And then armed with my value, I can paste it in there. If I hit the tab key, you'll now see that change update. And notice that the margin and that baseline grid align perfectly by measuring with the rectangle frame tool and acquiring that really bizarre number of 21.52 millimeters. So with that done, I'll click OK and I'll go back to view and choose fit spreading window. And that's how you can calculate first the top margin to get the space right that you need at the top of your publication and then how you can figure out that quirky little value for the bottom margin, making sure that your baseline grid aligns to the margin and everything's synchronized. We now are in a place where we can add a custom grid.